Oh, come on, put your hands together for Jesus. Oh, this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. This choir, this great choir is going to welcome you into this place this morning. With the words of this song, we welcome you to South Liberty. You know the words. You ought to sing them with us as we make ready to worship our King. We welcome you. Somebody shout hallelujah in this house this morning. He's worthy to be praised. We do certainly welcome you, whether you're here in person or certainly viewing uh, out on one of our platforms. We are glad to have you tuning in with us this morning where we are rich in history, relevant in the community, and ready for eternity. This morning, this morning, we lift our king this morning, reminding ourselves that worship it's not about us. It's all about him. When we enter his gates with thanksgiving in our hearts, we lift him up. Let us lift up the holy God whom we serve right now. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world, and they that dwell therein. Congregation. Altogether, who is this King of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the King of glory. 
God bless you. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord on this morning. Our choir is coming to lift the name of the Lord in song. Righteous God, we serve an almighty God. Come on, did anybody come? 
Come on, why don't you stand to your feet and ask the Lord to send the Holy Ghost. Yes, to me, you say, follow me. everything y'all doing right now just a little bit more because if it's any Sunday you ought to have a dancing in your feet if it's any Sunday you ought to have a praise on your lips it's the day of Pentecost the Bible say when the day of Pentecost was fully come that they was all in one place and on one accord the accord we ought to be on this morning is we ought to all be giving God thanks and praise for the power of the Holy Ghost. Oh, give him praise all over this building. Hallelujah. Lord, let your Holy Ghost come on down. There's something about the Holy Ghost. And we thank God for his precious Holy Ghost in our life. Anybody thank God for the Holy Ghost this morning? Thank God for the Holy Ghost this morning. Hallelujah. He is a keeper, as the old folk would say. And I got it. Because he's a keeper, it's good for us today to spend some time discussing how he keeps. Come on with us to Acts. Acts chapter 2. Y'all said you want to talk about the Holy Ghost. Yeah. <laughs> That's where he is. Second chapter of Acts, beginning at verse number 14. Thank you for standing. That's what happens in the text. But Peter, standing up with the eleven, lifted up his voice and said unto them, You men of Judea and all ye that dwell at Jerusalem, be this known to you and hearken to my words, congregation. This is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel, congregation. And on my servants and on my handmaidens, I will pour out in those days of my spirit, and they shall prophesy congregation. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before that great and notable day of the Lord, congregation.
Ye men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God among you by miracles and wonders and signs, which God did by him in the midst of you, as ye yourself also know, congregation. All together. Whom God have raised up, having loosed the pains of death, because it was not possible that he should be whole. Oh, somebody ought to shout it right there. But may the Lord add a blessing to the reading, hearing, and doing of his holy word. This morning we want to pray together. We want to pray together. We pray. First, let me lift a praise report, if I may. On just uh, last night, I was returning from Hattiesburg. My wife and two daughters in the car, about a mile up ahead of me. We had enjoyed the graduation of my niece. And um, I pulled in to get some gas from Wilder. And I heard when I got back to the car, the phone was calling, and I could hear my wife and my children crying. They were calling 911. Someone had run into them there in McGee. I'm just an hour, a good mile, maybe two at the most behind them. And I couldn't be right there, but I know who could. And I said, Lord, you got to do something. You got to do something. When I made it to them, I found that though the car was severely damaged, my family is all right. So excuse me today if I'm going to thank God a little bit. Because I know he's real. Somebody else know he's real out here too. Somebody else done tried him before. You know that you know that if it had not been for him, that thing would have been another way. I appreciate him this morning, saints of God. I love him. He's a miracle worker. That's, that's, that's Come on. Come on, think about the wrecks in your life. Think about what the devil tried to wreck in your life. And why couldn't he wreck it? Promise keeper. <laughs> Way maker. Way maker. We pray this morning. We pray for Brother Larry Handy this morning. We additionally pray for Brother Johnny Patterson this morning, the entire Patterson family, we give God praise, for we serve a way maker. Gonna ask Deacon to come and lift this prayer in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Way maker, promise keeper, my God is an awesome God. I know you're awesome, 
Time after time, you have made plenty of ways for me. In your spirit, you keep telling me, trust me, trust me. I will lead you and guide you all through the way. Heavenly Father, we come this morning, lift our eyes to you. Know you are able to keep, keep, our arms, keep your arms on us, Lord. You won't let no harm or things come to us. Father God, we ask you this morning, Lord, forgive all our many sins, Lord. Father God, we need you every minute, every second, Lord, to help us on this journey. It get hard. We thank you for your Holy Spirit you sent to lead us and guide, Lord, to bring everybody out to our remember that you will keep your arms and protect us around. You said, not let our heart be troubled. Trust in you, you will direct our paths. Heavenly Father, we just ask you, Lord, to look down on our, on our pastor and his family, Lord. We just ask you, Lord, to keep your arms of protection around them. Father God, we look around the church, Lord. We have new members coming into the church, Lord. We have old members who came back home and said they can't sit at home no longer to be able to praise you. They won't come out to the house of praise to give you praise because you're worthy to be praised. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for your grace and mercy upon us this morning, Lord. We thank you for your healing spirit, Lord. We just thank you for being a God in our life, Lord. We just pray, Lord, that you'll shower this sanctuary with your many spirit upon us, Lord. Your Holy Spirit, send a fresh wind to you. In heaven, Father, we just ask you, Lord, to look on the pastor family, Lord. We just ask you, Lord, to hold them in, in a time of bereavement, Lord. Just keep them arms and protection around him, Lord. In heaven, Father, we just ask you, Lord, to continue to watch over our seniors, Lord. Keep them keep your arms on them, Lord. Lay your hands up on them, Lord. Heal them where they're sick, Lord. Where they're not sick, Lord. We just ask you, keep your hand and healing on them, Lord. And Heavenly Father, we cry out to you this morning, Lord. Keep your arms protection around our kids, Lord. We just thank you for the graduation season, Lord. They went 12 years, Lord, to, to, to graduate. We thank you for that, Lord. And Heavenly Father, we thank you for being able to come out to your house of prayer. In your son Jesus' name, we all say amen. Come on, lift your voice in this house just a little while. Can we praise him just a little? Call on the, the way maker who has made ways out of no way for every one of us. Praise him for yourself right there where you are. You are here moving all around. We worship you. We worship you. You are here, standing in our midst. We worship you. We worship you. We call you miracle work, promise keeper, light. Miracle work, promise keep a light in the darkness. My, y'all to pick it up in your spirit with us this morning. Let's worship our God all over the way maker, way maker, miracle work, promise keep a light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. Way maker. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are, that is who you are, that is who you are, he is who you are, deliver us who you are. That is who you are. Way make, way make a miracle work. Promise keep a light in the darkness. My God, that is who you
will bless the Lord at all times. Yeah. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills from which comes my help. My help coming from the Lord which made heaven and earth. I just can't thank him enough. Good morning. Happy May 23rd, 2021 to all of you. Another blessed day above the ground. We just thank God. We would like to read two thank you cards. A blessing is just what you need right when you need it. To South Liberty MB Church from Lakeisha L. Grant. Thank you for your cards, your flowers, and every kind of expression of sympathy shown following the passing of Demetrius Boo readers. Your support at this difficult time was very much appreciated and a great comfort to me. Thank you so very much, Lakeisha L. Grant. To the South Liberty Church family, thank you for all acts of kindness shown to me during the passing of my grandmother, Mrs. Minnie Lou Baker. May God continue to bless all of you, Tamika Conway Fletcher and family. We ask that you keep the family of Brother Johnny Patterson in your prayers. Uh, keep him and his family in your prayers. His son, Kenneth Patterson, will be funeralized tomorrow, May the 24th, at 11 o'clock a.m. at Burke Cemetery. The visitation is today from 2 to 4 p.m. at Family Memorial Funeral Home. And we ask that you remember Brother Johnny Patterson. He's going through right now. It's his day today, and it could be ours tomorrow or this evening. So we ask that you do whatever we need to do for Brother Patterson and make sure he's well taken care of by South Liberty. I don't have any birthdays or anniversaries, to, but to everybody that had a birthday from January 1st to May the 23rd, let me see your show of hands. If you had a birthday already from January 1st to May 23rd, well, happy belated birthday to you. You're still here. God bless you, and God keep you. And remember, Jesus is the reason for all seasons. God bless you. Can I 
I say that one more time? Stop living if you don't mind. Jesus, Jesus, made the blind to see. Oh, Jesus, he healed the man with leprosy. His name has the power to save and set us free. So much power in his name. Oh, sweet as Jesus. I'll tell you wherever I go. He will. He will In the name of Jesus, so much power, there is love. In the name of Jesus, so much power. In the name of Jesus, somebody needs love. In the name of Jesus, unconditional love. In the name of Jesus. Somebody needs peace in the name of Jesus. Anybody need peace in the name of Jesus. Somebody needs deliverance. It's in the name of Jesus. Anybody, anybody need deliverance in the name of Jesus. Oh, there is power. Talking about love in the name of Jesus. Somebody needs peace. It's in the name of Jesus. If you need peace, it's in the name of Jesus. Somebody needs deliverance. It's in the name of Jesus. Somebody needs deliverance. It's in the name of Jesus. Let's go to church, choir. Oh, there is power, 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 power. Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost. I need it. I want it. Gotta have it. Power. Walking, talking, praising, power, 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 power. It picked me up, it got me out, it picked my feet, solid ground. Power, 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 healing, power, saving. Power, delivering, power, 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 higher, power, 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 I don't think they got the memo quiet. I said, how many need power this morning? If you need power this morning, help us join the choir and say, power, 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 on Monday, on Tuesday, on Wednesday, on Thursday, on Friday, on Saturday, on Sunday, I need it. Power, 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 power
power, power. The world needs power. The church needs power. The streets need power. Holy Ghost, power. Holy Ghost, power. Holy Ghost, power. Do you need power? Do you need power? Oh, come on, praise him good up in here. Oh, come on, praise him good all over the building. We know there's power in his name. Holy Ghost power in his name. There is no other name under heaven where man might be saved. There is. Look like y'all ain't through with that yet out there. Look like y'all ain't through with it. There is power in the name of Jesus. Glory to God. Glory to God. Go on. Whew. I told you, y'all not surprising me this morning because it is the day of Pentecost, a day of power. In fact, they had such good church that day, Cynthia, that 3,000 people joined the church. Same. Uh, Y'all, uh, tell somebody close, tell them, have all the church you want to today. Have all, have all the church you want to today. You shout down the whole road. Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. God, 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 uh, yes. yes, hallelujah. Some of y'all ain't got that two-step down yet. Some, some of y'all don't know really what to do. I got to do some more preaching around here. I, I, I got to praise. I got to pray that I got to get out. I got to pray. Can you help your neighbor? Oh. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Acts chapter 2, Acts chapter 2. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. God. Y'all feel all right up in here this morning? Acts chapter 2. Won't you let me... Read this into your hearing. Verse number one says, when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all in with one accord in, in one place. And sudden. There came a sound from heaven as a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house. They were sitting in. I want to jump to verse 15. Watch what 15 say. For these are not drunken. As you suppose, seeing it is but the third hour of the day. Watch verse 24, and I'm done. It said, watch this. 
God have raised him up, having loosed the pains of death. Because it was not possible to hold him. Pray with me and pray for me. Father, in the holy name of your son, Jesus, how thankful we are for this precious day of Pentecost celebrated throughout Christendom on today. Just 50 days after the resurrection. And God, just as your manservant sang of power. Power it was that brought the Holy Ghost unto us. We declare your grandeur. We praise you for your power. Thank you for what you've done, what you're getting ready to do right now. I ask that you would hide me on the cross. I lift to you my mind, my mouth, my ministry. That you might feed us with manna from heaven. Lead and guide us as only you can. In the holy name of Jesus. We do pray amen, amen, and amen. Brothers and sisters, sisters and brothers, for the time that is ours, and using the text before you, I'd like to tag a topic entitled, The proof is your Pentecost. The proof is your Pentecost. The question is, have you experienced your Pentecost? Because you cannot experience my Pentecost. I'm glad that when the Lord wanted me to have some proof, he did not tell me I could get it from your Pentecost. I have to have my own. Last Sunday, we shared with you from the sermon topic, Becoming a Better You. And I, and I, and I would offer that you go back and, and hear that sermon again. Um, that you would go out to YouTube or wherever it is now, because during that particular message, we're trying to convey the, the process of salvation. We, 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 we try to convey, Omega, that, that, that salvation has several steps that, that, that must be involved. The, 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 the first step, and so many stop at the first step, Felicia. The first step is to decide. That, that, that first step of salvation starts with a decision. It was the day that something happened and uh, hit my heart and allowed me to get to the point that I needed to confess with my mouth and believe in my heart that Jesus is who he says he is and he did what he said he was going to do. It's that point. It's that point many years ago. It's that point that caused you to go up to the morning bench. It's, It's that point that caused you to make the decision that I need to go give God my heart and the preacher my hand. It's that point that pulls you, puts you on the road to salvation. That is the point of decision. Yes. Yes. That, that decision is codified by not only a coming to the altar or a prayer uh, with somebody, but also uh, that which is an outward sign of the inward change, which we call baptism. So so after I made my decision at some point, I was also baptized and and, and, and so on and so forth. That's the decision stage of my salvation. How many know you're not done at that point? 
Y'all looking at me strange. But, but so many in Christianity believe, Monique, that, that, that once I go down to the altar one time, and once I go in the water one time, and I did that when I was 10 years old, then now for the rest of my life, I can do whatever I want to, and everything going to be all right. Devil lives a lie. Devil lives a lie. Devil lives a lie. That's the decision. You made a decision. Best decision you'll ever make in your life. But it is only, watch this, a decision that gets me on the road. The road ends, can I talk to you, at death. Oh, God. The, the road ends when I die and when this, this, this earthly tabernacle, when, when it goes to the ground and, and the good part of you and I, the spirit does what? When it goes to live with our God in heaven. How many know flesh and blood cannot enter into the kingdom of heaven? Only the spirit is able to. He's going to change this body into a celestial body, able to go over there and live with him in eternity forever. That is what we call glory of the saints that is the end of our salvation the point at which we have been saved from this wicked world I think I got somebody's attention here I told you about your decision step one told you about the death well the writer says he worried about dying because it's better for him to die because he said it's better because to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. He said he understood that a person who is saved certainly understands that. But, but there, that there's another, another place along that road of salvation. And, and that place is what I like to call the detour, the detour, the detour. I'm not talking to you today about the decision. I don't want to talk to you today about the death. I want to talk about the detour. The, the, the detour, the, uh, the, de the detour happened somewhere along the line of salvation. It happened somewhere between the time you made the decision and the time you died. It happened somewhere along that particular roadway. It happens at a different place for every person. Watch this. Don't tell. That's why I, I, I've seen nine-year-old children uh, that had a little bit more spirit than I saw some 99-year-old people. Y'all ain't helping me up in here. It ain't necessarily a time on the calendar at which you hit your detour. You hit the detour when God allows for that moment to happen in your life. What is that moment in your life? That's the moment at which you are born again. Somebody shout, I'm not doing when I'm baptized. Nicodemus, one of the most brilliant scholars in all of the scriptures, that the book said that he heard Jesus speak one morning and went looking for him by night, found Jesus. I'm glad that I, I can always find him when I need him. Found Jesus said, what must I do? Jesus even gave him applause. He said, you, you a man of the scriptures. You know the word. You've been to Bible study, BTU. You. you made it. You done all of that stuff. Nigga, demon. What? Now, now, now you talking about you don't, even, you, 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 you don't even know if you're saved or not? You've been in church all your life and you don't even know if you saved or not. He said, matter of fact, oh God, I'm coming down somebody's street. He said, matter of fact, you got the nerve to be a master and teacher of Israel. In other words, Barlow Standard Version, you teach in Sunday school and you don't even know if you saved or not. What? What must I do? be born again. Je Jesus said, marvel not. You know the word, don't worry about it. I'm going to help you. I'm going to get you out of this mess. Marvel not. He said, you must be 
born again. He said, well, what do you mean born again? Jesus said, you got to be born of the water. That's what? You got to be born of the water and of the fire or of the spirit. He said, well, wait a minute, Jesus, I don't understand. I understand about getting baptized, but but what do you mean this this other place, this other experience I have to have? He said, "Yeah, you do. do I'm supposed to climb back in my mother's womb and be born again?" He said, "No, Nicodemus, you got to be born again. How does a man become born again? That's what we're talking about in the text. For the text is revealing." To you and I today, that step of salvation that, that, that changes us, that, that step along the road of salvation that, that gets us to a place where we have been born again. And that is the moment, watch this, Marie, it's when the Holy Spirit not just hangs out in the same room we in. It's when the Holy Spirit comes and lives on the inside of our hearts. And, and it's at that point that I have the Holy Spirit. I have Jesus living on the inside of my heart. And that's the point that the sanctified church would say, you have become converted. Y'all remember when you sang this, I already been to the water. I already been baptized. I already been converted. What does it mean to be converted? Conversion is the point that I have received the Holy Spirit of God. And now I got the Holy Spirit of God. I know I have that which is inside me that makes me do some things that even shock me. Y'all ain't helping me here. It, it, may, he, it makes me do some things uh, that blow my mind more so than anything. Uh, it's made me no longer have an appetite for the stuff I used to do. Y'all ain't helping up in here now it's the Holy Ghost that, that, that that's the reason you don't want to go to club no more. no more it ain't got nothing to do with the fact that you don't know what a, you don't forgot what a club is it ain't got nothing to do with the fact you don't listen to that kind of music no more cause you do it ain't got nothing to do with the fact praise the name of our God that, that, that you don't want that, no, you, that you don't like to dance cause you know good and well you still like to dance uh huh baby it's because you got the Holy Ghost Holy Ghost, the reason you don't think as bad as you used to think. Just look straight. Don't look at your neighbor this morning. It's that experience. And many in Christian nowadays are missing the experience. Yeah, they've been saved. Yeah, they've been baptized. But have not yet received the Holy Spirit. Oh, it's the Holy Spirit who changes lives. It's the Holy Spirit who changes your mind. It's the Holy Spirit who gives you what it is and the direction that you need to be moving. It's the Holy Spirit that's doing the work. Come here close, let me help you. It's the Holy Spirit, and the Lord knew we would need the Holy Spirit to carry on this particular ministry. Here's the ministry that he carries on. He gives you your proof. That you saved. The biggest lie that the devil will ever tell you. Is that you ain't saved. God ain't got nothing to do with you. Look how you still cussing. God ain't fooling with you. Look how you still, look how you just drunk that whole six pack without even looking up. God ain't got nothing to do with you. Look what you are. So, so anybody, am I preaching to myself up in here today? Every now and then, the devil is going to try to what? Steal, kill, and destroy. Steal, kill, and destroy our faith in what? Our faith in the experience we had, which allowed us to know that we're different than what we used to be. And the devil is going to do everything he possibly can to get you off the road of salvation. So you'll go back to where you was, out there with the world, doing everything that you thought you were 
big enough to do and the greatest way to do that is to get the plan with your mind telling you that you ain't had the experience that you thought you had but no devil what I observe determined is that when you know the experience you had when you've been born again, when you had a Pentecost, then it don't matter what the devil say. You know that you know that you know that God got something to do with you. Am I talking to somebody in here that know God got something to do with you, hun? That he's come in and rearranged your life. And, and you, are, even though you're not where you want to be, you thank God that you're somewhere on the road to salvation. Because when you look back, you can't even really see the girl you used to be. You can't even really come on up in here, somebody. Oh, I thank God. You ought to thank God for your progress. Problem with some of y'all is y'all don't thank God for your progress. At least you don't smoke the whole pack no more. At least you don't drink the whole case no more. At least you don't say all the words no more. At least y'all ain't helping me up in here today. Some of you ought to thank God for your progress. I ain't perfect. I ought to slap somebody. I ain't perfect, but I'm progressing. Well, you got to keep reading your Bible. You got to keep coming on right on up here, out here to church, even though you feel like it, even though you just come in this morning from the, from the last night, it stamps still on your hand. You still ought to come right on up in here, drag yourself up in here. Don't sit on the 15th row. Sit mid me at ways so I can look at you. Don't let the devil tell you the pastor talking about you because he talking about probably talking about the other girl on your row. Way worse than he talking about you because she looks more saved than you, but she's doing more sin than you. I got to move in the text. I got to move in the text. I got, I got to move. There's going to be some times. Maybe there's going to, if I'm right about it, somebody here know there's going to be some times that the devil tell you you ain't saved. And the way to know that you know that you know is you got to have somebody on the inside called the Holy Ghost reminding you that you done had a Pentecost. If there was anybody, if there's anybody that knows that, that could help us understand that, it's Peter. P Peter is the preacher in the text. The scene is taking place where preacher, if Peter is doing some preacher, pre preaching, but if there's anybody that, that, that really looked like a Baptist Christian, it's Peter. P Peter was up, and he would die. I know I'm preaching to about seven of y'all right now. We first meet Peter in John chapter 1, verse 42. Peter's name was Simon originally, but the Lord changed his name, which is a, a, a akin to him making the decision to be saved. We then meet Peter at one of the highlights of his life. Matthew 16, chapter 18. I, G, G, Jesus said, who has people been saying I am? And, and all the disciples they, they didn't really want to reveal that they had been in some places where they'd been listening to people gossip. But Peter exposes his, this thing, and Peter said, Thou art the Christ, son of the living God. Jesus said, Peter, boy, I'm proud of you. And on this rock, I'm going to build the church. What? On the rock of somebody able to say uh, that Jesus is uh, the one who did everything I needed. Jesus is the one who have come uh, in order that I might have salvation. It's upon that rock that I'm going to build a church. Peter again. Wait, wait a minute now. Peter, Peter, you're doing good. Peter, you're preaching good. You get ready to start your ministry, but then watch what happens. Luke chapter 22. Jesus said, Peter, the devil desires to sift you as wheat. It's when you start progressing. It's when you start reading your Bible, start listening to gospel a little bit more than you listen to Gucci Mane. It's when you start trying to do the best that you can to be better than you ever have been. It's when you start. Those are the particular times that the devil has desired to sift you. 
In other words, the devil want to get you out of what you're doing. The devil don't want you to be in, in interested in the things of God. And so he tries to come at you. He'll come at you through your friends. He'll come at you through, through all kinds of situations. That joker comes at you with everything he's got. He comes at Peter. Jesus says, Peter, the devil desired to sip you. But Jesus said, watch this. He said, but I have prayed for you. I've been praying for you. Jesus is praying for you, honey. Jesus is praying for you. He said, I pray for you. What, watch what Jesus prays. He said, I, what I pray is that your faith, faith, faith fail not. What I'm praying is that you don't let go of the gospel plow. What I'm praying is that you don't turn around. What I'm praying is that you don't go out there talking about you Muslim now just because you don't went to college. What I'm praying is that you don't get out there talking about now you, you, you in this and you in that. You don't believe the ways no more. That what I'm, I'm praying that you hold on. I'm praying, boy, that you have an experience that allow you to know that you're saved even though sometimes, watch this, you don't feel like it. Y'all looking at me strange. Am I the only one in the room that sometimes I just don't feel saved? So sometimes I don't feel like saying hallelujah. Sometimes don't feel like doing all the stuff, but you still saved. And one of the greatest farces of the enemy is to believe that salvation is just a feeling. Salvation is more than a feeling. Matter of fact, if you just get, get pinned up in, you always got to feel something, praise our God, then you're going to be at a loss because sometimes your greatest spiritual awakening will happen without you having felt anything. Y'all looking at me strange up in here. Stop running out here talking about I didn't get nothing out of church today. Praise the name of God. That might be the day, glory to God, that you got the most of what you needed. Hallelujah. Come on, stop, stop talking about I ain't going because, I, glory to God up in here. Somebody. I didn't feel nothing. I had surgery some 15 years ago, shit. Killer. They went in my neck. Move stuff to the side. They showed me what they did. They move all my stuff to the side like that. Went in to the back and put some rods in there. And then put the stuff that they just moved to the side, the larynx and fairness, all this stuff. Put it right back. Stitch it up, John. I'm serious about this now. And I didn't feel nothing. But it don't mean that the work wasn't done. I'm preaching good already up in here. We saw, pre we saw Peter. We saw Peter. We, we, we saw Peter. We saw Peter in Matthew 26. Uh, Jesus said, Jesus said, Jesus said, somebody going to betray me in the room. Peter said, what? Well, Peter, the first one out of everybody. Peter said, ain't no way I'll leave you. Peter said, every last one of these jokers, they going to run off and leave you. i never leave you. John 18, we see Peter again now. Now, now, now the, the boys done came out to take Jesus to jail. Peter done pulled out the switchblade. I'm talking about Bible yeah. preaching Peter. Yeah. Straight Baptist. Pulled out the switchblade. Cut the man ear off. Matthew chapter 26. Peter falls as low as he possibly can. For after Jesus has been crucified, or, or is being crucified, they said to Peter, you one of them that was with him. And Peter said, what he said, Jenny? He said, no, I wouldn't. They said it again. Peter, you is one that was with Jesus. You are the one. He said, no, I what? And then the third time when they accused him, he shall not say what y'all Baptist folks say. You got to come to Bible study to get what he really said. You got to come to Bible study to get what he really said. Peter had ups. 
he had downs because of what he did, because of his denial of Jesus. What happens in John chapter 21, Peter has now turned in his letter of resignation, no longer wants to preach the gospel, Crowley. He goes back to fishing, which he was he was doing before he met Jesus. Look like the devil done won, ain't it? The preacher don't even want to preach no more. He back fishing. However, so stun. I thank God that we got Acts chapter 2. For it's in Acts chapter 2 we find Peter emerge as a dynamic evangelist. What is it that that, that makes the difference in Peter this time. Not, not only Peter, but the other ten disciples at the same time also emerge. It's, it's as if they explode, Reverend Hines. It's, it's like if something comes over them because these are the same men who when Jesus was crucified, they ran to, in, into a house and locked the doors, made sure the windows was locked so nobody could get in because they were terrified that the Romans was going to come for them next and they were, did not want to die just like they saw Jesus die and Jesus had to go find them boys and he walked in the door he walked excuse me while he just showed up in the room and Jesus got in the room the first thing he said to him Johnny Vance was don't be afraid it is I That's right. That's right. all the 11 preachers scared to death hiding Jesus walked in and said boys listen y'all gonna have to not be afraid I'm gonna have to help you and listen listen now something happens on this road this is why I need somebody to know Janice something happens that makes these 11 disciples go on and every last one of them die for the gospel message something pushes them past their fears got them to the point that they not only was uh, was strong and believing, they went out preaching that Jesus did die and was risen from the dead. And they did that until all of them were murdered for doing so. Let me say it simply. Kalia, if I know that you said you were going to do something that you really didn't do, I'm not finna hold up for you. Y'all ain't helping me here. If I know that they said that you said you were going to be raised from the dead, but you didn't actually raise from the dead. We actually stole your body and hid it somewhere. And somebody tell me that they finna kill me if I don't tell what happened. I'm snitching. But if something happened and I know that I know that I know that it did happen just as you said. That you did get up with all power in your hand. That I did see you in your resurrected body. Then I'm willing to take that and go forth with it and be crucified for it myself. But there's something you need in order to do that. And that is a Pentecost. Gotta have a Pentecost. We see Peter's Pentecost. We see a Pentecost here in the text. Let me give you the Pentecost here that happens in the text. What happens in the text is uh, Jesus has been resurrected from the dead. Watch this. And he has, was, since he resurrected from the dead uh, last month, watch what happened. Jesus has been just showing up talking to people. He just been showing up in his resurrected body. He just he showed up and talked to the disciples. Y'all remember Thomas said, I ain't going to believe him unless I see the hand, nails in his hand. He showed up, talked to Thomas. He showed, he been showing up. In fact, he done shown himself to over 40 different people. And in one of these times, watch this, Jesus said to the disciples, uh, he said, listen, uh, y'all ain't going to really understand this right now, no, but I want you to do something for me. He says, I want you to go back to the very place that you just saw me get crucified. I want y'all to go back to Jerusalem of don't leave town don't be worried about it don't care about what they're trying to say about it he said i want y'all to go back to town and i want y'all to stay together and when you go back there and stay together this is what i want you to do i want you to keep doing everything that you've been doing i want you to keep worshiping i want you to keep working i want you to keep waiting that's what i want you to do in acts chapter one verse number eight he said i want you to wait and when you get over there this is what you're waiting on i'm getting ready to send you some power I'm getting ready to send you uh, 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 some, some, some power 
that's going to change everything in your life. I'm getting ready to send you the kind of power that's going to make you think right. Power that's going to make you talk right. Power that's going to make you walk right. Power that's going to make you live right. Power that's going to make you tell a dying world about a living Savior. I'm getting ready to turn you all way around. Y'all ain't going to be just no pity Andy preacher. You're going to be one that's willing to say, I am not ashamed of the God. I'm getting ready to send you a Pentecost. That's what it was here. That word Pentecost is five. And so this, what, this, this day of Pentecost was 50 days after the resurrection of Jesus Christ. So what happens is, according to Levitical law, 50, every 50 days after the Passover is supposed to be a celebration or a day of Pentecost. And that's what the, the, this gathering is here in Acts chapter 2. What has happened in Acts chapter 2, they are together for the day of Pentecost. The Bible says that these 11 disciples because one of them dead, right? Judas has taken his life. These 11 disciples are now, they are in the upper room together. Now, on the day of Pentecost, verse 1 said, when it is fully come, uh, meaning this is now 50 days uh, after the resurrection of Jesus today. Uh, it's 50 days after the resurrection of Jesus Christ. He says, uh, they were up there and they were in one accord uh, in this room. Where was this room? Uh, the room was actually in the church. Glory to God. Please don't miss this. Don't think that they were just in a room somewhere in somebody's house. No, they were in a room in the temple. Huh? They were in a room in the church. Listen, don't you let nothing keep you from church, honey. I told y'all a couple weeks ago, huh? don't give me this mess talking about I ain't bad. Oh, do they saying that this thing's still out here? I'm saying that the Holy Ghost still out here too. You better come on and get your what you get your help. I'm sorry, I just can't. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, I just can't live it, huh? Like I need to live it, huh? By watching it on TV. Come on, somebody. I've been watching exercise channels for the last 10 years on TV and ain't lost one pound. I need about five to understand. I need to be in the house of God, giving God glory and praise. Glory here. Let me move here. Let me move. Oh, glory to God. See, I'm trying to convey uh, that they are in the temple, Mildred, uh, and they are worshiping the Lord. Uh, they are worshiping, and the Lord has told them uh, to wait. They were waiting on him uh, to give them what he had promised. Mm -hmm. uh, and not only were they worshiping and waiting, but they were also uh, they were also working because one job they had was to find out who was it that they were going to replace Judas with. Mm -hmm. uh, these men were engaged in uh, this wonderful exercise. Uh, uh, but watch what happens in the text. The Bible says, verse 2, uh, and suddenly uh, suddenly, 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 you know what suddenly is don't you? Suddenly is, it just happened. Suddenly is, something just happened. Suddenly is, I don't know I, don't, I, don't, I can't explain it, but it just happened. I, I looked over there and then and I looked back, something was going on. This Bible, the Bible says that suddenly, uh, like a mighty Russian wind, uh, it came in and filled the house uh, or this room that they were sitting in. Uh, and the Bible says that tongues, uh, they was able to look up and see something uh, that looked like cloven tongues. Uh, and these tongues fell over every one of them. Uh, I'm glad he felt the cloven tongues fell on every one of them uh, because that allowed me to understand uh, that salvation, though we experience it per per publicly, uh, it's a personal experience. Uh, anybody got a personal savior Anybody serve him personally? Anybody serve him in your own? You, you got a tongue that you talk to him too? Can you tell him about all your trouble? Do you Have you gotten to the point that you really don't really depend on nobody else to pray for you? If I'm really asking you to pray for me, I'm just telling you to reinforce something I done already done for myself because I know it him and I know that he's able and I know that he will. Glory to God up in here. Praise the name of God here. What happens what happens, what happens uh, is that these tongues fall down uh, upon each of these men uh, and they begin to speak with new tongues. Uh, now you ought to understand what happens here. Uh, they begin to speak with these new tongues uh, and what happens is uh, when the Holy Ghost gets in you just right, 
Uh, you praise our God can't stay at the same place. Uh, you got to get uh, active and begin to move uh, about. That's why when you see somebody uh, show sure enough get happy, you're going to see some kind of movement. They're going to stand up first like John do. Huh? Then they're going to start waving their hand. Uh, then they're going to start moving around like, like they got to go to the party. I need some help here. Then they go, y'all, hello, some uh, And so what happens here, uh, these men, uh, they come downstairs uh, and they begin to go out into the streets. Uh -huh. Don't tell me you got the Holy Ghost huh? and you won't go out in the streets and tell nobody about Jesus. These men go right out there in the streets huh? and when they go out into the streets, uh -huh, they begin to go preach the name, the word of God and you know who the main preacher is? Uh? This old man Peter. Uh? Peter is the one that's standing up. He the one doing all the preaching. He doing all the talking. Why is Peter doing all of this? Boy, I thought you were fishing. Huh? It's because I done got converted. Converted, huh? I done got the Holy Ghost down on the inside and the Holy Ghost got me at a place huh, where I got to do huh, let me say it this way huh, that I don't really understand huh, what I'm doing myself huh? I just find myself doing some stuff huh? it's just like fire come here Jeremiah Jeremiah said it's just like fire huh, that shut up in my bone huh? anybody ever felt the Holy Ghost huh, moving over on the inside of your body oh bless the name of our God huh? I love how we used to sing about it uh, back in the old church. Uh, see, in the old church, uh, they used to have a song uh, that'll tell you everything you need to know uh, about the Holy Ghost. Uh, the song said, uh, what is this? Uh, got me feeling uh, so good right now. Uh, what is this? Uh, make me want to run on uh, anyhow. Uh, and the old mother would say, uh, whatever it is, uh, whatever Whatever it is, I just can't hold my peace. Anybody feel heaven here? Look what happens in the text. The reason I need to show you this text is because the song I just told you about is evident everywhere. When you look in this text, hallelujah here. What, what can I tell you? This is how you can know that you got the Holy Ghost and you say, and sanctify and fire baptize and fill with the Holy Ghost here's your first way you love your enemies glory to God up in here hallelujah up in here see that one of the main one of the main ingredients of a Christian is to love uh, and the Bible says uh, anybody can love somebody that loved him. Uh, but you really doing some Christian work uh, when you can love a booger that don't care nothing about you. Uh, oh, can I find about five here uh, that know that you know that you saved uh, because the same folk uh, that you know done done you wrong. Uh, you smile now in the face. Uh, you can hug them and love them and even slap fire with your neighbor if they on your road why not because of anything you done but it's because of God and has placed the Holy Ghost down in your heart how do you know this preacher verse 8 says it like this verse 8 says that Jesus told them boy that they were going to be witnesses unto all the people uh, in Judea uh, and Jerusalem but watch this uh, he also said uh, they were going to be a witnesses for him uh, in Samaria uh, I need about five of y'all to understand Bible here uh, you know that the Samaritans and the Jews uh, hated each other uh, you know the Samaritans and the Jews didn't fool with each other matter of fact the Jews wouldn't even walk through the neighborhood of Samaria uh, they were their greatest enemy uh, but Jesus told these boys in verse 8 he said man when y'all get this thing so good huh, you gonna be glad to go see your enemy huh, and tell them about the Lord huh? I wish I had somebody huh, that knew that you were able now to love your enemy uh, oh, but there's a second dynamic that I need to tell you. And the separate, second dynamic is uh, that you won't be ashamed uh, when you got him just right on the inside. Uh, you won't be ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Uh, look what Peter does in the text. Uh, the Bible says in verse 14 uh, that Peter stood up uh, and he began to tell everybody. Uh, he said, y'all need to hearken to my words. Uh, he preached them a whole sermon uh, about what Jesus had done. 
uh, and how Jesus had been crucified uh, and how Jesus had risen again. Uh, brothers and sisters, baby, uh, it don't take much for you to preach that sermon uh, when you show sure enough get sanctified. Uh, preachers, I can hear Peter saying uh, that I'm not ashamed of the gospel uh, of Jesus Christ uh, for it is the power of God uh, unto salvation uh, unto every man that believeth. Uh, ain't God all right? Uh, do I have anybody here uh, that loves your enemies? Uh, do I have anybody here uh, that ain't ashamed of the gospel? Uh, if you're not ashamed, uh, you ought to shout, I'm not ashamed. Uh, I'm not ashamed of the gospel. Uh, but not only uh, am I loving my enemies, uh, and not only uh, am I not ashamed of the gospel, uh, I told you uh, uh, that every now and then, uh, you'll be able to feel something. Uh, and so a person that got him real good, uh, every now and then, uh, ought to be able to feel uh, pretty good. Uh, is there anybody here? No, feel pretty good right now. Uh, look at Peter here uh, in verse 15. Uh, everybody saw uh, what Peter and the disciple were doing. Uh, and everybody that saw them, uh, they said them folk, uh, they must have had some good wine uh, up there in the room. Uh, because look at them now. Uh, glory to God here. Uh, and that made me want to know uh, what in the world uh, were Peter and John uh, and the rest of them doing uh, that everybody wondered uh, if they were drunk or not uh, what I can believe uh, is that whatever they were doing uh, they were showing the fact uh, that they feel real good uh, they were moving around uh, giving God the praise uh, they were looking like uh, they felt real good uh, and this joy that I'm talking Talking about uh, when the Holy Ghost uh, get up in your body uh, and is moving in your heart, uh, it don't matter uh, what's going on around you, uh, you'll feel all right. Uh, there'll be a feeling on the inside uh, to let you know uh, that everything uh, gonna be all right. Uh, I wish I had somebody uh, that could testify of the story. Uh, ain't God all right? Uh, have you ever been there? Uh, have you ever experienced the death uh, of a loved one? Uh, but soon uh, when you're in the midst of your crying, uh, you felt somebody uh, put his arms around uh, and let you know uh, that everything uh, going to be all right. Uh, don't play with me up in here now. Uh, have you ever ever been to a church uh, and the people were singing uh, and the song may not have sounded all that good uh, but you got up uh, and start feeling uh, something down on the inside uh, what is this uh, it's the Holy Ghost uh, it's a Pentecost uh, it's a Pentecostal experience you can't explain it to nobody because it's happened in your life but it's the place you got to go back to it's the place you got to remind yourself uh, that I know I'm safe because uh, I feel all right. Uh, I know I'm safe because uh, I love my enemies. Uh, I know I'm safe because uh, I'm not ashamed of the gospel. Uh, I know I'm safe. Uh, let me give you the last one. Uh, I know I'm safe uh, because I just can't hold my peace. Uh, is there anybody here uh, every now and then? You just can't hold your peace. You got to tell does that mean, Reverend? When you got the Holy Ghost good, you just got to tell your story. And you'll tell your story to whoever listen to you. Now it don't matter. They can call you crazy. They can call you holy roller. They can say you act different. You don't care what they say about you. But you can't hold your peace. You got to wave your hand. You got to stand on your feet and testify that the Lord been good. Ain't he been good to you? Every now and then, you got to hold 
You just can't hold your peace. Uh, look what Peter done. Uh, verse 24. Uh, Peter said, uh, y'all is the ones. Uh, y'all crucified him. Uh, I just can't hold my peace. Uh, Peter said, y'all can't crucify. Uh, glory to God. Uh, look here, Reverend. Uh, I changed mics five times. Uh, but I just can't hold my peace. Uh, good God am I. Uh, you got to tell the story. Uh, every now and then. Uh, you got to tell the story. Uh, I got to tell you. Uh, what Peter says here in the text. Uh, Peter says. Uh, Y'all crucified him. Uh, Y'all laid him in the ground. Uh, watch what he said. Uh, but he said. Death. I just couldn't hold him down. Uh, thank God. All right. Uh, is there anybody here? Here, huh? no, he's all right. Huh? Do you know it happened? Huh? Just like he said it happened. Huh? I wasn't there. Huh? I wasn't at the tomb. Huh? I wasn't on God got to heal. Huh? But I believe it happened. Huh? Just like he said it happened. Huh? Why do you believe, Reverend? Huh? Cause I've had huh? my own Pentecost. Huh? I've had my experience. Huh? I got proof in my soul. I got proof in my soul uh, that he died. Uh, I got proof in my soul uh, that he died. Uh, I got proof in my soul uh, that he stayed right there uh, all night Friday. Uh, I got proof in my soul uh, that he stayed right there uh, all night Saturday. Uh, I got proof in my soul uh, that early Sunday morning. Uh, Sunday morning, uh, he got up with all power. Holy Ghost power, demon chasing power, correct healing power, body fixing power, cancer healing power, regulating power, Holy Ghost power, sanctifying power. Yeah! Yeah! Ah! I know he's all right. I know he's all right. Do you know he's all right? There's proof. And the proof is your Pentecost. That experience that you had that can't nobody make you deny can't nobody change your mind about it no folks you say you can't make me doubt him cause I know too much about him I know he's a healer I know he'll heal your body I know he'll show up I know he'll comfort you in the devil of one. I know he'll make your enemies your f do. I know that he will. Do you know? But when you know, I just want you to know that the devil gonna try to tell you that you ain't sure. And you got to be bold enough to tell the devil the proof is in my Pentecost it's in my Pentecost won't you stand in this house come on choir
If there be one today ready to make the decision, decision, decision is simply you praying a prayer for the first time in your life, letting the Lord know that you want him to be the head of your life. That's a simple decision. That decision will be followed up with a baptism in your life. Praise our God. The doors of the church are open for anyone seeking that decision this morning. Glory to God. Maybe there's one that's in the house today looking for a church. The church are open. If you would like to make this your place of worship, we certainly are open to all. Glory to God. Hallelujah. There may not be one here today. Doors not. The doors are also open to you, our online community. Well, where the, wherever you are, if you're watching, message has resonated with you this morning and you want to be saved please reach out to us we want to pray with you we want to partner with you we want to point you in the direction that the lord would have you to go according to the holy scriptures come on just reach out to us by calling or texting 601-896-ROCK we stand ready to speak with you concerning your next steps to salvation this has been a glorious day this morning we thank God for every one of you that have come out. Our ushers are awaiting you. They're going to escort you out as you face the walls. They'll escort you out. There are baskets to the rear of our church that are going to be there for you to leave any gifts of love that you would like to leave for the furtherance of the gospel of this gospel ministry. We thank you for coming. Every visitor, we all wave your hand if you're visiting. Visiting with us. Glory to God. So we all family in here today. We bless your name, bless your name, dear God, for sending all of these great family members back on out this way. This Bless you. Enjoy your Pentecostal Sunday. And we look forward to seeing you on a Wednesday night here in Bible study and next Sunday for our graduation celebration. We look forward to what God is getting ready to do in the lives of our young people. Receive your benediction. Now on to who is able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless before his presence with exceeding glory to the only wise God, our Savior, be all glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forevermore. This great choir is going to lead you, we'll give you a little walk in music as y'all leave this place, but never the presence of our God. Love you. Nobody.